Hello, my name is Cassandra Romas and welcome to 30 Medical Minutes. Women have unique health issues which include pregnancy, menopause, and conditions of the female organs. However, included in women's health issues are urinary problems, fertility issues, and cancers of the breast, cervix, and ovaries. Our guest today is Dr. Diana Contreras, Chair of OBGYN and Women's Health at Morristown Medical Center and Medical Director of OBGYN and Women's Health for the Atlantic Health System. Dr. Contreras is going to describe comprehensive medical services provided for women, providing care for women in any stage and all stages of life. She will also describe the subspecialties that are included in the OB OBGYN service arena. These include maternal fetal medicine, fetal diagnostic and treatments, and urogynecological treatment. It looks like Dr. Contreras oversees a wide-ranging department that provides inclusive medical treatment for women of all ages. Please stay tuned to listen to Dr. Diana Contreras describe the wonderful work being done at the OBGYN and Women's Health Center for the entire Atlantic Health Medical Service region. And now let's welcome Dr. Contreras to 30 Medical Minutes. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Contreras. That is a lot to talk about and a lot to oversee. Well, thank you, Cassandra. I want to tell you that this is really an important topic and it's very important to me. So I'm delighted to be here and to discuss all of it. Well, you're very gracious and very kind to uh, be here. So let's first find out a little bit about yourself and your medical background. So I am by training an OBGYN. And what does OBGYN mean is that we take care of women from adolescence through essentially their entire life. And I then went on for specialty training where I did a fellowship in women's cancer. So I take care of what I call any of the cancers below the belly button. So it's the female reproductive organs. Okay, so um, that means that you really do have a wide ranging overview of, of women. So can you describe for us the scope of the medical services that you do oversee? Sure. Um, not only do I oversee them, I'm very proud of them. <laughs> we give <laughs> great, great care and we have uh, quite a number of people who care a great deal about caring for women. So we take care of the general OBGYN takes care of general issues related to women and women's health. Where does that take us? It takes us through the obstetrical world. So women who are going to have babies, babies planning on having babies, babies. or um, just their usual GYM visits. Mm -hmm. And then a general OBGYN could do your hysterectomy, if you're bleeding at DNC, any of those kind of procedures. They treat a lot of um, things that women are concerned about. They're really your advocate as well. Um, anytime that you're having any kind of issues with your female reproductive organs, mm -hmm. it's really, that's the person to talk to, your OBGYN. And it's really that for your entire life. Then we have people who specialize in taking care of high-risk moms and high-risk babies. And then we have people who take care of cancers. We have people who take care of women's urological problems. What does that mean? Women who have problems with urinary incontinence, anything like that, as well as um, what we call reproductive endocrinology, which helps take care of fertility, hormones, any of those kind of things. So we really are far reaching, take care of the whole gamut, and it's all about women. Well, you know, you really surprised me because Frankly, like most people, and you described this in the beginning, I thought obstetricians deliver babies and the gynecologic, uh, gynecological uh, physicians oversee you for, give you your pap smear and make sure that you don't have a, a cancer or, or other condition. You're saying, hey, that's just a little tiny portion of what we do. You're, you're talking about a huge gamut of things. Yeah. So and, and you also mentioned fertility too. Right, so we have subspecialists in all kinds of things, and we take then, so if it's fertility that you need, you come to us, we have that. If it's a high-risk mom with a high-risk, we've got that. If you want somebody to help you with your pap smear or osteoporosis or anything, we've got that. If you want somebody who you're worried that you could have something wrong or you've been told that you have some kind of pelvic mass, that's us also. So it's really, if you have problems with urinary issues, that's us. We're really a very big umbrella to really wrap our arms around all of women's health. 
as much as people don't realize, we're here for your entire life. We start with you when you're in your late adolescence and go the entire time with you. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, another issue. I think a lot of women as they age don't think that they should go to a gynecologist for care. Or um, you mentioned urinary problems, very common. You can see in the drugstores there's a lot of products for women who have uh, you know, urinary incontinence and everything. Do they still go to you? Or do they still go to your... your? Yeah, your, come to us. Your, your, That's <laughs> for sure. That's for sure. So you start off with your regular gynecologist who then makes a few assessments and then based on your needs, we have specialists who you can see who that's all they do. They go do, after their residency in OBGYN, they do subspecialty training and they spend three years just learning about these things, learning how to handle them medically, how to handle them surgically, and it's only about women. We only deal with women and it's mm -hmm. really about addressing women's issues. Sometimes people forget that when you go see a cardiologist, they worry about your heart. Your heart's right. really important. We appreciate that. When you go see a GI guy, the GI guys worry about your, your GI tract. When you go to see a neurologist, they worry about your nervous system and your brains. When you see a gynecologist, the gynecologist worries about all of you from top to bottom because that's our job. Our job is to make sure that women are healthy, that they're doing all the prevention that they need to do, and whatever treatment they need, we're, mm -hmm. we're there too to help guide you through all of that. So we're here from the very beginning to the very end, and we're here to take care of all of you. People frequently forget that we also can handle issues like sexual dysfunction, issues related to vaginal dryness. These are all really important issues related to women. You see those commercials on TV. I do, right? all the time. So yeah. who are you going to go talk to them about it? Right? You're yeah. going to come to us. That's who you're going to come talk to. You're going to say, I saw that on TV. It describes just what's happening to me. What should I do? And so then you go and see your gynecologist about That's what we're here to do. We're here to help you, to guide you, and to be your advisor as to the options that you have. It's all, it's all about options and educating women about what they, what's available to them, discussing their needs, and going forward with them to help them to, to answer whatever problems you have. Well, <clears throat> I think this is wonderful because um, as, as our population ages and, and uh, there are more women living longer lives, this becomes a, a crucial and an important piece of information that you're giving us that we can turn to um, a woman's health centers, such as the ones in Atlantic Health System, to give a full diagnosis and a treatment options. Right, so we're here for everything. You know, recently I had a problem where I needed a certain test and I didn't know where to turn to. I called my gynecologist and my gynecologist was helped me to lead me to the right place. So your gynecologist is a wealth of information. They can help you with your medical needs related to GYN, but they're really there for you the whole time. And I, I, I can't emphasize enough about how important it is that women remember that once you've had your babies, it doesn't end. <laughs> Women, we're here for women the whole time. You have different needs mm -hmm. and different things, and that's where we're also here to fill those needs. Right. So the average OBGYN is there for you during your pregnancy and also there for you as you go further into life and you have other needs. And we really want to make sure that women are well taken care of. Good. So we've talked about the elder woman a little bit. Let's go back and talk about women who um, are want to get pregnant, are worried about getting pregnant, and this expanding field of fertility, where there are so many women who want to have babies and can't have babies, does your area cover that as well? Yes, so that's us. Again, Again we're one-stop shopping. One-stop one shopping, one I stop love it. <laughs> so we, we have what's called reproductive uh, endocrinology, or REI people, and um, the basic issues can be worked up by your gynecologist. If you have to go into more sophisticated things, then we have the subspecialty. Again, it's OB, people who are OBGYNs who have gone on to do special training in this area. So when people talk about in vitro fertilization and hormones that they use to get pregnant, that becomes uh, the area of OBGYN for which we have subspecialists that handle that. Mm -hmm. Your average OBGYN can handle some very basic issues and they are very good at addressing those issues. So. I always tell people, don't worry, go talk to your OBGYN. That's the first person you call mm -hmm. because they can handle much of what's going on and then if they will know where to send you next if you need to go anywhere else. And it is a big problem, isn't yes. it? Yes. You found the field is growing. 
the field is very much growing. First of all, it's growing because um, the technology has improved tremendously. Oh, that's the, a good point. The amazing things that get accomplished today are so different. Early in my training, there were so few options for women. Today, the technology that goes on is just unbelievable. What, what can be found, what can be uh, helped with people, you know, there's all kinds of things that people can undergo to try to get pregnant. So it's, it's a really growing field because technology has really grown. On top of that, you know, we have a large number of women who delay their fertility. And mm, so yes. mm -hmm. they, they sometimes end up in a situation where they may need a little help. And so that's where the field has developed to help everyone to get, you know, to be able to have children maybe later in life when they've choos chosen their time. What's happened today in OBGYN is women have a lot more control over their fertility, and so they may delay their fertility. And mm -hmm. it's important that on the front end we help you to delay to when you want to get pregnant, and on the back end we help you to get pregnant when you want to get pregnant. Have you ever had a patient come to you saying, um, well, uh, I, I've just finished college, I want to get into the workforce, I want to develop my career, and I think I want to have a baby 15 years from now. Can they turn to you and you can guide them? and what to do to make sure that they're fertile when they want to have babies in their late 30s? Okay, so first of all, let's be sure there are no guarantees, okay? Okay. But to be an informed person. Yeah, that's the word, informed. Informed. We are, all, the field of OBGYN is about informing women and empowering women. It's really about empowering women to make educated choices about the options that they have. 15 years from now, the technology may be totally different than our technology today. Where has medicine gone in 15 years? Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. But if you were to think about it, we are very much the first step. We would be able to guide you as to where the 25-year-old should go if she wants to delay her fertility and say, I want to freeze some eggs or I want to do X, Y, or Z different things. The options are huge and the first step is your OBGYN. That's a very good point because frankly, I do know some older, not older, but people mm -hmm who are having their children, choosing to have, try to have children in the late 30s, even early 40s. Sure. Which in, you know, not that long ago, a generation or two ago, that would have been impossible to even think about. That would have been a person having a, a baby in their, in their, when their, their lives were changing, their whole mm -hmm. bodies were changing to, um, through menopause or something. Um, but yes, if a person wants to know they want to have a baby, um, they can freeze their eggs. Yes. When, they're, when, they're, when, the, when the body is young and the eggs are probably far more um, viable, shall we say? So there's so many options. There are so many options today and I can only imagine what's gonna be available in the future. Okay. But yes, you're right. And so the best way to understand the options is to go see your OBGYN. Sometimes we depend on our friends and we depend on our ma local magazines. And really, <laughs> the best it. option is your gynecologist. Okay, fine. Okay, so um, we talked about Atlantic Health System, mm -hmm. which includes uh, Overlook Hospital in some New Jersey, and Morristown Medical Center in Morristown. Um, so we're a total of five hospitals. Uh, would you like to repeat those? Sure, so we're in Morristown, we're at Overlook, we're at Chilton Medical Center, we're in Newton, at Newton Medical Center, and we have a uh, we've got a colleges at Hackettstown, mm -hmm. um, north of here. Okay, very good. And in each one of these locations, do you provide office care, and what else do you provide? So those are just the hospitals for which we do have office care, and we have surgical abilities, and we have testing that can go on. But they're also what we call um, satellite offices for which we provide a lot of care. Mm -hmm. And they're really throughout the state of New Jersey. We have multiple sites where our specialists go to so that we are bringing the care to the patient, not always causing the patient to come to us. Mm -hmm. We're very much interested in being patient-centered and really about caring about making it easier for women to be able to see their gynecologist when it's more convenient and in a location that's more convenient for okay. them. Okay, and we're talking about wellness type of care. Yes. As well as people who are manifesting a symptom uh, or have a problem and they need to have care. So we're talking about wellness and prevention. Prevention is really important. And so we as gynecologists feel very strongly about prevention. That's why the pap smear was developed. Right. Right, as a, uh -huh. as a way, and it was developed by a gynecologist, um, as a way of 
um, preventing people from getting cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. We talk about other screenings as ways of, prevent, of preventing a bad outcome. Patient falls, actually, as an older woman, is a really important issue. So we need to make sure that we're addressing issues related to osteoporosis. Really? So it's really important to us as gynecologists, as a woman ages, that her bone structures are supporting her the way that need to be supported. And if they're not, we need to intervene, giving you medications to keep you as strong as possible. Absolutely, women are living longer. So we have to make sure that while women are living longer, their quality of life is unbelievable. It's again about empowering women. Wow, I am so impressed, Dr. <laughs> Contreras, because you we're talking about medicine in every single field, and you totally are talking about one-stop shopping. So it's very comforting to know that if you have an obstetrician gynecologist who um, is there for you, you can actually talk about many issues that you thought that you cannot even bring up to that doctor. Right, so that's really what this is about, about empowering women to understand that we're here for them. You can mention if you have a heart problem, you can mention if you have diabetes, you can mention if you, um, you're having vaginal problems, but that's, uh, of course, you think about it, but you can talk about everything. Absolutely. Gynecology is a really important part of what goes on, and what happens to a lot of women is they think once they're finished having their babies, they're done, and they really, you know, you finish having your babies probably early 40s, and you feel great, and everything's good, so you don't even go to many places, right? You don't mm -hmm. go to a primary care doctor. You don't need a cardiologist. Where do you go? You go to your gynecologist. Right. Okay. Let's go back to something you sure. mentioned earlier. You talked about um, high risk and low risk and uh, women having children. Um, what in your definition is a low risk pregnancy? So that's, that's a very good question. So a low risk pregnancy is a patient who has no medical problems herself and that the baby looks like it's doing fine. Mm -hmm. So everything's going great. Probably most people, that's what it is. It's considered a low risk pregnancy. Right, and you can determine that through the new technology, the ultrasounds and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it, generally a lot of it has to do with mom's health. Uh -huh. If mom is healthy going into pregnancy mm -hmm. and the baby looks fine on ultrasound, that's considered a low risk pregnancy. Okay. Now, in today's day and age with all these technologies, the young women who have medical problems earlier on as teenagers or as young women, previously, they weren't able to get pregnant or people encouraged them not to get pregnant. Not today. Today is a totally different world. So a young diabetic who they themselves are di have diabetes, we know that that can have an effect both on the patient herself and on her fetus. And so those are the patients that we see in what we call high risk. And we have a very large high risk program at um, Atlantic Health. Mm -hmm. And so it's you, we may uncover a baby that's having a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a baby that we would want to see in our fetal diagnostic and treatment center. Patients who are, they either the patient themselves has a problem or that the child has a problem. And because we take care of two entities. Right. Right. And right. so yeah, we're a unique and child. It's exactly, exactly right. So we're a unique field in that no other part of medicine are there two two um, entities at the same time that we have to take care of them medically. So you mentioned fetal diagnosis. How do you do that? So the ultrasound is pretty amazing today. Uh -huh. uh, where technology has gone, when I was training, it was just a lot of fuzz. And <laughs> now it's pretty unbelievable what you can see. 3D imaging is just unbelievable what we can see. So the world has really changed significantly. There are tests that can be done as well on, on the fetus on the placenta, on the fluid that comes out to see what's going on with the baby. But there's a lot of things that can be done while the baby is in utero, while the baby's inside of that mom. That is totally amazing. It that, is. And that's a miracle. It is. That you can treat a, a, an unborn child and actually cure them of some condition so when they're born, they're healthy. Yes. That and actually happens. Yes, it does. It happens a lot. And there's a lot of uh, instances where we can know ahead of time that there's something going on with the, the baby so that when the baby is born, we know exactly the plan. And that's really what a oh, lot of this is about. that's a very good point. Right. That once the baby is born, you've been alerted to what sort of treatment is needed immediately in the, as, a, uh, as a newborn at, yes. in the neonatology unit. Right, so that's really important because what we do is we make a plan. 
and we have all the right people in the room that are needed when the baby's born, if that's needed. Mm -hmm. If the baby needs to go someplace a couple days after it's born, we have that set up also. So it's about establishing a plan, understanding what's going on with the baby ahead of time so that we can make sure that everything's right for mom and the baby. Well, once again, I'm really <laughs> thrilled. I'm very impressed, and it's, a, it's amazing to think that so much can be done um, before birth and after birth as well. It's true. Okay. One more, let's sure. talk about something else that you mentioned earlier. You talked about um, that there are, unfortunately, cancers that women, only women can um, have, unfortunately, and you do treat that, and that is one of your specialties. Right. So I am a women's cancer specialist, and we're called GYN oncologists, and we have quite a large um, group here at the Atlantic Health System. And what's become very exciting about G1 Oncology is that now we're able to do a lot of our procedures through small holes. So patients don't have to have, in, not in every situation, but patients don't have to have this big incision anymore. Uh -huh. And sometimes we even do it as outpatient surgery. So we oh are goodness. able to take care of your cancer in the morning, bring you in the hospital, operate on you, send you home at night. <gasps> So you can go back home to your family and take care of the people you love and want to be taken so, care of. So, and what type of cancer can you do that with? So one big cancer that we're able to do a lot of that with is what's called uterine cancer, which is the most common cancer in women. And so it's really changed the whole field of how we take care of women. We have what's called robotic assisted surgery, the Da Vinci robot. We have quite mm -hmm. a few of them at Morristown and at Overlook and at quite of the other hospitals. And we have subspecialists who are able to handle this. And it's really amazing what it's done for women. It's empowered women that you don't have to have this big incision that then you can't go back to work. You can't, you know, we've given you the power to go back and do your life again. Are you saying through robotic surgery you can um, remove a, a cancerous uh, uterus? Absolutely. Uh, so what is we that do, a type of hysterectomy? Though? It is. So we do the whole cancer staging. Everything we would have done through an open incision, we do through little holes. We do three or four little holes. And what we do is uh, the uterus comes out from below, like a vaginal hysterectomy, and we take everything care of everything else with the robotic system so that we know exactly what's going on with the patient's that cancer. That is amazing. So if you have a little tiny incision, you're saying very small like yes, that. Yes, the biggest one is, is a half an inch then you don't have um, big scars, you don't have a big um, area of inflammation and p potential of infection and all that sort of stuff, Absolutely, right? and the greatest thing that's happened is that we've learned that it's really safe to send patients home quickly from the hospital. Uh -huh. And we know that the best place for people to recover is in their home, taken care of by the people who love them. Well, you know, I think a lot of people worry about that, thinking that they really should stay in the hospital to get the expert care of the nurses and physicians and all the aides. No? No. It's no. not needed. Not needed, huh? It's far better for you to go home, get up and walk around and eat your food at home that you like. And we've done, we've been doing this for a while now and it's really been very and successful. And you're finding, you're finding that people recover much faster. Much faster. Uh -huh. it's, you know, it's, it's tough to be in the hospital, right? We take everything away. We control everything. You don't walk as much. You don't walk as much. Yeah. We give you back your power. You go home to your bed, to your pillow, to your bathroom. Okay. So we have this lapros, is it called laparoscopic? Yes. It's Lapros a form of laparoscopic surgery. We do it mainly with robotic assisted. Okay. And that's especially good for uterine. What about other cancers that you take care of? So we also take care of cancers like ovarian cancer and cervix cancer and vulvar cancer, other cancers that are a little more rare, but those are all our areas of specialty. Uh-huh. Now, I want to talk about ovarian for a mm -hmm. second because I'm aware that it's very hard to diagnose or, or for a patient to be aware that yeah. they have that condition. It's kind of like a mis mystery illness, and when you do find out about it, it's almost too late. Is that still the case? Yes, unfortunately that is the case. It is a very, what I call insidious. It moves in very slowly. It doesn't give you any obvious signs. Things like bloating and not feeling well and cramping and all that stuff. We as women, that's all the time. Mm -hmm. So the fact is it, it kind of mimics other things and we unfortunately don't know it on time. So I always encourage people that if the symptoms don't go away in about two weeks, you should go see your gynecologist. Okay. They're the most attuned to it. So a gynecologist, again, we'll first be step looking in, for that. Would will hear you. We'll hear you. Okay. okay. They're listening for those things. They'll hear you more. Okay. Well, that's 
that's good to know because um, the um, the survival rate is not as high in ovarian as it might be in uterine. Correct. Or, yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And so it does, and it scares people, and it should scare people. We want to find people at an earlier stage. So if you had a message to give all of our audience today, what would that be? I would say, remember your gynecologist. That's the place to go. That's the person who's interested in taking care of you from the beginning all the way through. It's your OBGYN who's there for you your entire life. Okay, that's fantastic. And that covers from um, adolescence. Absolutely. When you're uh, just beginning to enter, um, uh, the, uh, let's say, I don't want to say sexual activity, but also learning about uh, having babies, when to have babies, how to care for yourself, uh, all throughout that whole period, the fetal time. Absolutely. So Menopause. We didn't even talk about menopause as well. Right. We could talk for a long time about menopause. But just remember, your gynecologist, your OBGYN is the person who's most comfortable talking about female reproductive issues. So as a young woman, sometimes you can't find anybody to talk to about these things that are confusing and you may have questions. Sometimes you're not comfortable talking to your pediatrician about it. That's where your gynecologist comes in. And that is the best message of all. Thank you so much for joining us today on 30 Medical Minutes.